Hi, I'm Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make this reversible beach bag. It's so easy, so much fun, and it takes almost no fabric. Now what I use to make this bag is called Flower Sugar. It's from a company you may not have heard from. Lucian Fabrics, they're from Japan, and they make just a beautiful array of fabrics. And this is something new. It's a canvas-like fabric. And look, I'm gonna show you what, what the, um, the outside of course is this fabric, but the inside of the bag is this one. And look how cool this is. You have one design, the floral here, and then you've got this pinstriping down the bottom. And that's how we were able to bring in all these fabrics, but actually it's only two different fabrics, but it looks way more involved than that. So let me show you how to make this bag. So fun, and who doesn't need a beach bag? Um, that you could use it for the gym. There's many, many uses for a bag like this. So let's get started and learn um, how to make this particular bag using this fabric. I'll point out the uniqueness of this fabric. Now, of course, you can use what Ever fabrics you want, um, but in this case, we want to take advantage of the floral and the stripe being printed on the same fabric. So, now this is available as a kit, so you can just pick that up. It has both of the fabrics, both of the cream and then the red as well. Um, it has the grommets and it also has the cording, so everything you need is in there. So, the kit's obviously very convenient. You don't have to go shopping for extra things. Um, if you do use that flower sugar fabric, we want to point out that um, obviously you want those stripes to to hit each other just right. But let me go into let me go into some measurements here first, so you know why I'm emphasizing this. Now this is a half a yard of fabric. It was just a half a yard um, across the width of the fabric, and we trimmed this down to be 20 inches. So if you are using the flower sugar canvas fabric. Um, in fact, let me get that fabric out again, just to, just to point this out. If you just cut your half yard of fabric here, let's say you, you bought some of the fabric and you just cut this half a yard and you just cut this 20 inches, because um, this is 18 by 20. This might not necessarily line up here. And see how this cut looks, is kind of diverging. So if you are going to use the Lucian Flower Sugar fabric, um, which is so darn cute. Just be mindful that you have the same amount of stripe on this piece as you do on this piece and that the stripe was cut properly, so um, straight. So this is 18 by 20. I have two of those. Now this is going to be the bottom of the bag. You can see the striping in here. I'm going to go ahead and sew a quarter inch seam around those three sides and I've done that ahead of time. And I did that in a darker thread. Of course, I would use a cream. I wouldn't use a black, but I wanted to do that so you could see what I was doing. So you've got the three sides, and now you're going to box the corner. Um, that's this part right in here that creates that little way for the bag to sit nice. Now, if you want a bigger opening, box your corners bigger. Today I'm going to box my corners to four inches. I think this bag was three and a half. I'm going to go for a little bit of a bigger bag because goodness knows I want a bigger opening. Um, it's just easier to get things into the bag. Now when I box corners, the first thing I like to do is I like to trim off that little corner right there. The other thing that seems to make boxing corners easier sometimes is if you actually press some of these seams open. Now on the canvas bag we didn't do that we just just for expediency. Um, I'll show you how to do that without pressing it but pressing it makes it I think it makes it even a little bit easier. So when you box a corner I'm just going to get this seam over top of this seam and I'm trying to open that up so it lies open rather than in rolling to the side, which creates kind of a nice, well, not a nice bump, it creates a bump, and I don't like that. I want that to lay open. So that's one of the other reasons I clip that corner is it helps it lay open. So I'm gonna lay both of those open like this. There we go, it's a little bit awkward. You can see why pressing is so nice because then it just lays open for you right there. One seam is over top of the other. And this is where I like to use the friction pen and my small ruler. It'd be very awkward at this point to bring in a big old ruler and try to manage that. So if you haven't gotten the six and a half inch ruler from Omnigrip, just get it. You'll have 
so many uses for it and it's a ruler it's, it's not something that you'll have to replace so just make the investment and get it over with so i'm gonna if i'm gonna box my corner four inches then i'm gonna lay that ruler so that two inch mark goes right along the seam line so right there boy i got lucky the first time sometimes i have to fidget around and find that sweet spot today i got lucky found it right away so i've got my two inch running right along the middle there's my zero and there's my four so I will simply draw this line here with my friction pen. Now I like to go ahead and pin whenever I'm going to box a corner because I don't want that to shift on me while I take it to the sewing machine. So I'm just going to put a couple pins in here. Now I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and just run a straight stitch all the way from here to here. And I'm going to repeat that on the other side of the bag. So when I come back, these corners will be boxed and once you box them you just go ahead and trim um in fact let's do that step together i don't want to get too far ahead of you if you've never boxed a corner let's go ahead and i'm going to sew on that line repeat for the other side when i come back we'll keep going on our back now that i've boxed the two corners here you can go ahead and iron away that friction pen if that bugs you that's why i like to use the friction pen it disappears with heat um, or, you know, I doesn't bother me, so I'm going to leave it right there. I will get out that ruler now, and I'm just going to go ahead and cut that quarter inch seam away. Do the same on the other side. For the lining fabric, which in this instance is the red floral with the blue stripe, you're going to do the exact same things. Um, keep in mind the measurements for the project will be on the free downloads. It's the Shabby Fabrics homepage. Go at the very bottom, click on that link. You're looking for the reversible beach bag, but the measurements are very simple. It's 18 by 20, two pieces of that. Um, so now that we've done the outside bag and we went ahead and did the inside ahead of time because it was done the exact same way. For the outside of the bag, go ahead and don't turn it right side out. For the inside of the bag, or the reversible side, I guess I should call it, um, I went ahead and turned the bag right side out. And you can see it still has the same box corners. Um, so you will go ahead and feed this bag into the other, matching the side seams as you would expect. And this one got pressed open. I would go ahead and press that open, at least the top portion. Line that up, we'll pin it, and you'll keep pinning all the way around and leave here let me just get that inside here so we can see how that works pin all the way around leave a good five six inch opening so we'll go ahead and turn the bag through so when i come back i will be at the place where we're ready to turn the bag through in fact i will go ahead and turn the bag through and then i'll take you the next step so I turned my bag right side out and it looks like this. I wanted to show you that so you didn't think you made a mistake. It looks a little weird. You've got your opening here. No worries, just stuff that red portion, in this case, inside. When I first started making bags and topes and projects, it, it, you know, I was, I was a quilter. It didn't have a sight picture that I was used to seeing, so I wanted to show you what that looked like so you didn't think that you'd made a mistake. Now, I'm just feeding the inside portion, the lining. It's not really a lining because the bag is reversible. The reverse side, I'm just trying to get those same box corners to line up with the same box corners. But where the focus really is, is on the top of the bag at this point. I've got a few threads here. Let me just trim away. Um... Now we've got this opening here. So as if you've watched any of our other videos on how to make a bag, just as you would suspect, turn that under a quarter of an inch, turn this under a quarter of an inch, and I'm just gonna pin that, and you would go ahead and do a top stitch. Now remember we've turned it under a quarter of an inch, so the top stitch always has to be less than the quarter of an inch in order to catch that seam so i would take this to the sewing machine and i won't do that just to save us time and just sew 
I'd fold all these down so they're nice. So you see that and you see that. And, and I, I like to pin that all the way around so nothing rolls on me, nothing shifts on me. Um, just keep moving that all the way around like that. Keep pinning it. You know, if you're not a fan of pinning, and I'm not, do it anyway. And that's because every time that I have skipped the step of pinning, I've regretted it. I either didn't have the finish look I wanted or I ended up seam ripping. So just, you know, learn to love your pins because they're going to give you a more finished uh, result, a more professional looking project at the very end. Obviously pin all the way around, stitch a quarter inch, or I'm sorry, an eighth of an inch seam, uh, seam right across here. That's going to close this opening. Then in order to create this cuff here, the neat thing is, is the cuff is right there. So let's pretend that that was already all stitched down. Of course, the pins would be gone. Now I'm going to turn mine down a good three inches. Now because the bag has grommets, it's going to be very important that there's some stability so when we start putting the grommets in, um, nothing is shifting. Now normally, you just turn that down to you visually like it. In this case, we're going to get much more specific. We'll use our larger ruler and we'll use our friction pen. Let me turn it this way and we'll measure down three inches. Now, of course, I'd have this all smoothed out. I haven't done that. I'm just trying to save time on video, but I'd have everything all smoothed out. Okay, so take the time to do that. This would be closed, obviously, with and top stitched. You're going to bring your ruler in and mark a three inch. Now, maybe you want more of a cuff. Do three and a half, do four, do whatever you want, but go ahead and mark that line on the front and mark that line on the back. And then I recommend you take that to the sewing machine and you actually stitch. Of course, you're going to put the bag around the, this part and you're going to stitch on that line. And why I'm having you do that, why I recommend you do that, is once you turn the, this down and you start adding grommets, the less shifting you have, the better. So let's pretend I've drawn that line. I went ahead and I sewed on that line just to stabilize this upper portion of the bag. You go ahead and fold the bag down, the top portion down, until you have that seam, or that stitch, I should say, right on that top, okay? So at this point, now we get to add the grommets. Now I've got a grommet kit here, and this is from Dritz Home. Again, this is part of your kit if you do buy that from Shabby Fabrics. We will have all of the information about what grommets you need to buy on the free download so you know exactly what product to purchase. Now I went ahead and took the sample bag and I took the, the cording out. I wanted you to see this laid out so you can see where the grommets are hitting. Specifically, where we started marking with our small ruler and our friction pen is in from the seam. Do you see how I have an inch in from the side and I'm going to be an inch and a half down. So there's going to be my first mark right there. This grommet is over four inches from the right. So still one and a half down, but four inches from the right. And we'll mark that point. Make sure you see that very clearly. You'll mark the bag the same way. Inch and a half down, one inch in, inch and a half down, four inches in for this grommet, and then the same on this side. Okay. Now, the next thing we'll do with our grommet kit, there's several parts in here. We have our anvil here and, and this part, which is what you'll actually be hammering against. Let's put those aside for now. What you'll be using here, and I believe they're calling this the eyelet, is when you place this over top, of one of your drawn dots. You're trying to just center that in there. And with your friction pen, I'm going to try to mark around here as best I can, and I'm going to remove that. Okay. So I've got a, a place now. And of course, that fabric has to be removed in order for the grommet to be in there instead. And of course, just like you would expect, you're going to continue in those places centering this over top, drawing the line. If you make a mistake with the friction pen, iron it away, no problem. And you can just start marking again. 
Now, because we didn't want anything to shift, I'm just going to pin on either side of this just because I don't want anything to shift. I grabbed two pairs of scissors, a larger pair that's going to cut through the bulk of this fabric and then a smaller, more, you can get into, into places a little bit more easily. So I'm just going to fold that in half just like this and I'm just going to start cutting. See how I've now made an opening and I See, I don't want to use these scissors for much more than that main cut because now I want to go in with my smaller scissors and I'm just going to work my way and get that opening so it's, it's that complete circle. And of course you repeat that for this step and all every time for all eight places where there'll be grommets. Now, the next step will be actually inserting those grommets. So we moved outside because now we're going to put the grommets in that does require some hammering. Now we tried this once on like a piece of cardboard um, and it didn't work. It needs to be something really hard like cement. So let me point out what's in your grommet kit. You have a setter, you have the anvil, you have a washer that has the teeth, and you have the eyelet. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll go ahead and take that eyelet and put that underneath through the opening and we'll put the anvil behind it. Now, you could lie this down in here, but I want direct contact with my cement so it's a harder surface. So shift that up. My pins are still in just because I don't want anything to shift. Go ahead and put the washer on top. Now I have my setter. Give at least one firm hit, maybe two. Okay, maybe three. And now my grommet's in place. Now that the grommets are in the bag, now we get to put the cording in. I put the one side in, but I'll show you how to do the other. They're, of course, done identically. Um, there's three yards of cording needed. We cut this into two one and a half yard pieces. So you'll just bring the cording into the one grommet and out to the side. Same here. In from the front. Come back out the, that grommet there. Just try to get those to be about the same. Now, handles, right? You want to be able to carry over your shoulder. So you can decide maybe you want that much of a handle. Or maybe you, you like that much of a handle. If you want more, just pull more out. And then you'll just even things out a little bit. It's like anything. You just try to balance everything out. That's about even. And then you'll simply grab those two ends. Tie a knot, grab those two ends, tie a knot, and you're ready to go off to the beach for the day. Hope you enjoyed how to make the reversible beach bag from Shabby Fabrics.